Hey, what is up? Take a seat, and I hope you're ready for the next episode. Today, we're going to be talking about the draft. The draft! Now, believe me, I know the stress of drafting. Now, I know it may look like this. Who should I pick? But we all know, it actually feels like this. <laughs> ah, but don't worry. I'm going to help you relieve that stress. Talking stats. Statistically speaking. Step one, rock the mock. All right, guys, I cannot stress this point enough. Mock drafts are the best practice exams there are. Mock drafts are the best way to see how this season's draft is going to go. It is very important to remember to do your research. I'm just saying, when the draft rolls around, it's better to not look like this. Wow, I scored such a bomb team this year. See those results. What? Enter? Suspended? Not even on an MLB roster? But they all had good seasons last year. Just remember, 15 minutes of research could save you 15 wins or more in fantasy. Number two, know thy league. Not all leagues are the same. You need to make sure you draft according to your own league scoring. Now, if your league has the category of stolen bases, but not the category of caught stealing, draft as many speedsters as you want so you can win that category every single week. Another example, if your league does not have a batting average as a category, this frees up a whole bunch of power hitters that you would otherwise like to avoid, the uh, Adam Dunn's of the world. This point is very important when it comes to pitching. We'll show you if doing double starters is even a good thing. Sometimes it may even show that there's virtually no benefit to even having a closer on your roster. Now I'd love to help you more with this, but all leagues are different. Please email me the link to your league scoring at fantasyotter at gmail.com and I'll be glad to give you personally tailored advice. It is very important to know your enemy as well. I swear, it feels like the same thing happens every single year. You and your buddies have your fantasy league, and then one of your friends invites this guy you don't even know into your league. Of course, he always had the pick right before yours. So there you are, minding your own, you got your player in your queue, ready to snatch him with the next move. Boom! Newbie takes him away! And then you're all in the draft message board like, I don't know who you are or what you want, but I will look for you, I will find you, and I will kill you. It's important to know your opponent know their favorite team. Because let's face it, everybody's a homer. Just some more than others. Who they're taking with their next pick. Check what positions they've drafted thus far, and then you'll see where they're most likely to draft next. It's that simple. Number three, depth perception. All right, guys, this is a very important point. So please, pay attention. If you're only gonna take one thing away from this video, make sure it's this. The word of the day, depth. Depth is defined at the distance between the top and the bottom. I want you to think about this in terms of positional value. Some positions are more plentiful than others in fantasy value. For example, there's a lot more elite fantasy players that play first base than there are elite fantasy players that play second. If you want an elite second baseman, you gotta take him early. Don't worry, I have a chart to illustrate this. Aw oh man, I don't have a chart holder. I got an idea. That works. This chart shows the four positions that greatly fluctuate in diminishing value. You see, we have the catcher position, first base, second base, and shortstop. Everybody above this line is a top 20 player. Every dot above this line is a top 50 player. And every dot above this line is a top 100 player. As you can see, according to FoxSports.com rankings, there is a surplus of elite first basemen, but a shortage of elite catchers with the lone Buster Posey right here, and a shortage of elite shortstops with Tulo right here. See, according to FoxSports.com, there is only one player that's going to be a fantasy top 20 that's a catcher, and one player that's going to be a fantasy top 20 as a shortstop. Now focusing on the shortstop position, we see Troy Tulowitzki is the only shortstop predicted to be a top 20 fantasy player. He is followed in the second tier by Ian Desmond, Hanley Ramirez, and Jose Reyes. Now after Jose Reyes, we see a huge break off from the 24th overall player to the 55th at Starling Castro. You do not want to be in this white area. When you're in a drop off, you're losing positional value. 
From Starlin Castro, we go to Alexi Ramirez at seven, at 63rd overall, and then another drop off to Elvis Andrus down here at 103rd. You do not want to be in this area because shortstop has no depth this year. Say with your first two picks you want a first baseman and a second baseman. You want to make these picks in order to get the shortest amount of white space. So say you go first baseman first, right here, and then these two second basemen get taken. You're going to be left with this second baseman right here as your second overall pick, which is a large gap. Whereas if you go second baseman first, and two first basemen get taken, you have a small gap from what is a fourth overall player to a seventh overall player because there's a higher concentration here at first base than there is in the spaced out second base. You want to cover the areas that have less depth. You see, since you already know you have to fill every position, you want to get the best you can at each of those positions. Don't trust the system. Simply fill your roster and avoid drafting players after long breaks at that position. See, you want to be the person that's creating the runs on the position, not following them. Now, if this all seems way too overwhelming for you during the draft, just simply ask yourself the question, how can I get the most elite player with the next overall pick? All right, guys, moving on to the fourth and final point. You want to consider the ceiling and the floor for a player. Now, this is a simple concept, so try to stick with me. Essentially, I want you to consider a player's best and worst scenario. Consider the player when he was at his all-time best, and you also have to take into consideration when he was at his all-time low. Example, if a player has injury problems or is known to be inconsistent for years at a time, you want to avoid that player altogether. But it is also important to remember a player's ceiling when you've seen him at his best. This is an example, Mike Trout, when he was on his terror MVP run. You want to consider that as his ceiling. Also, sophomores, they are very risky business. I like Jose Abreu. In fact, I owned him last season, but that was because I got him in the fifth round. Taking Jose Abreu in the first round with only a year to base his projection on, that scares me. Now, I'm not saying to judge a player by his career. In fact, identifying a player's current worth by his career batting average is as ridiculous as identifying what type of season it is by the age of the tree. Just like trees and players, each season is different. So make sure you determine worth by what is currently being produced. Say you have to choose between Ian Desmond and Troy Tolowitzki. See, Ian Desmond has had a pretty consistent year. He's played full season since his rookie year, and the most he's ever been out for an injury is two weeks. Whereas Troy Tolowitzki has gone out for seasons at a time when he has major injury problems. So you would say that Troy Tolowitzki has a lower floor. However, We've seen Troy Tolowitzki put up major MVP numbers over at Coors Field, so he definitely has a higher ceiling as a shortstop. Some people, they're just better towards the beginning of the year, like Jason Giambi or Gwen Stefani. Luckily, both Giambi and Stefani knew when to call it quits. Jacoby, Gwen yeah. Stefani, that uh, still makes music. No. Yeah, You're kidding? I'm not kidding. This is really sad. I think she needs to find a sweet escape from the music industry. All right, that about does it for today's show. I hope this show helped. Until next time, watch your waivers and don't trust the system. Otter knows. Hey, Mark, Mark, I got a joke. This is all good. This all is right. Good. So, uh, all right, here. Um, what do you call advanced statistical analysis of Star Wars weapons. What? <laughs> Lightsaber metrics. Ah! <laughs>